Today I'm picking up Reverend Lindsay Bainham. Uh, Lindsay's a colleague of mine and she is has an interesting story to share about open-hearted living and I think she's going to be a great contributor. Hey Lindsay. Hey. Hey, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm I really appreciate you it. doing this. I, uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you. Tell me a little bit about your background. Um, you know, growing up and, uh, you know, what what is your background? Sure. Um, I'm a Virginia girl and Richmond is the hometown of both of my parents. And so uh, for me to live in Richmond is really exciting. Um, and they literally grew up on opposite side of the tracks. Um, I'm biracial and my dad's family lived closer into downtown, but my mom's family lived more in Henrico in the West End. And um, I remember the first time I drove from one grandmother's house to the others and how different it changed, oh, yeah. but also how close they lived to one another and never met. Well, especially, you know, when you think about the history of Richmond, the capital of the Confederacy, right. that's, um, right. and when your parents got married, that would have been um, it about, edgy, right? It was about 10 years after it was legal to have interracial After the Walden marriages. case. No kidding. Yeah. Were the families okay with their wedding? My dad's parents came to the wedding. My mom's parents did not. Okay. Um, and there was healing when children were born. Isn't that a wonderful grandkids, thing? Grandkids, yeah. praise the Lord. Grandchildren really helped. <laughs> um, I've had to really think through the kind of humor that was used okay. when I was a child, especially by my grandparents' generation, sure, sure. which said a lot about race. Yeah. And it wasn't just <clears throat> it wasn't just the white black divide. It was also all sorts of ethnic groups that were discussed there, and and it was never done harshly. Yeah. But it was. It was throughout the humor that was used. Oh, yeah. That was often humor that degraded other people. And, sure. But I'm assuming that when you were growing up, people were actually very careful about not doing that. Yeah. I mean, I think I think of my maternal grandmother and her steep learning curve of statements or humor that she might have used growing up in the 40s and 50s. She had a steep learning curve of like, okay, I can't say that anymore. So a lot, of, a lot of people would label that as being politically correct. Oh, so she learned to be politically correct. That's how that would be played off. I don't think so. I think it's just being Christian. Yeah. I think it's just doing, speaking the way Jesus would want us to speak. And knowing that woman for as long as I did, she could not have loved me in the way that she did just being politically correct. Yeah, something happened to the heart. Yeah. Yeah, and so yeah. much of love is the shift into the mind and heart of Jesus. Yes. And and it's interesting, you said they didn't come to the wedding, but once those grandchildren right. came, right. that was that was different. It was and, different. And I think that, I'm guessing, I, I, I don't know your grandparents, but I, nothing engages the heart like grandchildren from what I've yeah. observed in others. Yeah. So we're on Monument, right here. Yes. This, this is a... a place, a street that's got statue after statue of Civil War generals. Now, when you see these, and you live really close to this, right? when you drive down here every day and you see all of this um, sort of celebration of these Confederate leaders, what's your experience of that? I'm a fan of history. I think it's important to know where we've come from, where we are, and where we're going. Um, but we're in a different time and place. And Richmond, with its historical nature around race relations and the, you know, the head of the Confederacy and all of those pieces, we can't celebrate the statues in the same way. And I don't know quite where I land on taking them down or moving them, um, but it's not the same time. It's not the same era. And that can't be ignored. And so when I see them sometimes, I think of folks who look at them and think, yes, that's who we are, Stonewall Jackson. 
and that's not who we are. Yeah, yeah, it's, well, and if it is who we are, then there may be something wrong with who we are. Yeah, so in the 90s, they added Arthur Ashe, um, who was a tennis star and Richmond native and heavily impacted education in Richmond um, and loved this city. And he kind of bookends Monument Ave and all the, all the statues. And that alone is showing, let's incorporate a fuller history of Richmond. So how do you experience the monuments? Robert E. Lee, I was taught in school and at home, was a premier military genius, which I think he was. Sure. What I wasn't taught is he was he was rebelling against the United States of America, and he was working to keep people enslaved. And, and even now, Lindsay, this is so ingrained in me that even as I say those two things out loud, uh-huh. I feel like I'm being... Um, yeah unloyal Mm. to something Mm -hmm. and it's really I find it really interesting in me one of the places where crisis pushed me is to really think through historically because you said you love history that's how you know somebody's from Virginia yes right and I love history too but I've had to I've had to pick up a new lens right and it's not a politically correct lens it's a it's a truth lens yes and and I think that we don't have to yell the truth but we do have to look at the tr- things truthfully and then speak the truth. Um, right. If there was a general leading an army in the United States right now trying to sever a state from it, I would not think positively about that right. individual. That's right. If they were further saying, and I'd like to return people to, a slave, to an enslaved status, mm-hmm. I would actively fight against that. Yeah. So when you grow up in Virginia and your heroes are people that later you look at and you say, wow, yeah. that's just not right. It's, it's a reorientation. Right. So what are some of the uncomfortable spaces that Christ has led you into? I served with a senior pastor who said one day, we're going to the Turkish mosque around the corner. And I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew about Muslim faith and Um, Islam, but it was not a comfortable space for me, and I didn't sense that I needed to be there, but Tim was always sure and trusting of where Christ was leading us next. Well, you've got a lot going on there, because it's not just um, the Christian-Muslim dialogue, but it's also the gender piece. Right. Right, and I was was pleasantly surprised, and I find that, that God does that quite often in my life of we had lovely conversation and the beginning of a relationship uh, together. And what did you experience that surprised you? That my gender was less of an issue. I was making a greater issue of me being a woman than they did. Than they did. Yeah. So they accepted you as a, as a leader in the Christian sure. church. Yeah. Sure. I saw um, they have kind of an associate pastor, um, a mom, and I saw him recently and just... It was like we had never, you know, skipped a beat. So my wife works with people with disabilities, and when I was much, much younger, um, she, we were dating. She'd pull up with a van, and, you know, the, the students in the van just had a lot of different issues. Um, some were dealing with autism, and others were, were autistic and deaf. Yeah. Um, there were multiple disabilities at play and she was just always so comfortable in that space right. but but I was just so anxious and nervous <laughs> and always doing the wrong thing and she still laughs about how awkward <laughs> I was you know I mean it was terribly awkward yeah. and, but, and finally she just helped me understand you've got to get in the van right like until you get in the space uh-huh. you're never going to meet the people unless you meet the people you're never going to get over because the problem is not them the problem is you yeah and but it it does take it takes time well it takes boldness too though yeah. and i think jesus is always just pushing yes to in my life at least which i do not like about <laughs> jesus i just want to say not a fan <laughs> not, i'm not a fan of that until it's over and then i realize you're thankful when it's over yeah of we, what you glean well it's like when you meet the the iman and and you're yeah. like oh this is somebody i can talk to this is a right. friend right um, and, and that doesn't mean you lose your Christian convictions, and it doesn't mean he loses what he's got. It just sure. means it's a more open-hearted space. Um, well, that's one of the things I really admire about Jesus is his ability to interact with people 
regardless. Right. He he helps people become something new, but he accepts them where they are. Right. So Lindsay, uh, people are watching this in a small group. What's yeah. uh, what's the takeaway? What's your advice? Be bold. You can do this. Um, find the spaces that create discomfort in you and stay a little bit longer than you would want to. Um, and then personally, I have seen the transformation in my own family and in my own life um, when folks are willing to love with an open heart. Hey, Lindsay, thanks for being here today. Yeah. Uh, it's great to see your hometown and see it through your eyes. Awesome. Thanks so much.